So the final thing we want to cover when we're talking about chemistry and biology are some very basic chemistry concepts. And we want to make sure that these are absolutely clear. Oops. We want to make sure that these are absolutely clear so that we have a better understanding of what we've learned so far in terms of chemistry. So chemistry concepts. Some concepts that are very important are the idea of elements. We've talked about this. An element, we can now simply define this as something that can't be further broken down via chemical reactions. This is the most basic unit possible um, in terms of things that cannot be broken down via chemical reaction. Uh, some basic elements to remember are Chon. Chon, C-H-O-N, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, actually make up, and it's amazing to think this, 96% of all life. All living things, 96% of them, if you combine all living things and break them down into just the elements that they contain, 96% of all of life has C-H-O-N-N within it. Very interesting fact to think of and understand in terms of elements. Next thing you want to remember is a compound. A compound uh, is just another way, I think, of just looking at a molecule, a molecular compound. You could say it's two or more elements. We know this. And they're combined together in what? They're combined together, remember, in a fixed ratio. What's a good example of this? H2O. How is this a fixed ratio? For every two hydrogens, we always have how many oxygens? One. That's our fixed ratio. That's our compound. Uh, another chemistry concept you want to be clear of is atoms. Atoms are the smallest units of matter. And more specifically, smallest unit of matter. They actually are the smallest unit of matter, but also still have element characteristics. So if we look at an oxygen atom, it still has all the characteristics of an oxygen element. That element, which can't be further broken down via chemical reaction, can be broken or not even broken, but looked at in terms of its atomic structure. And the atomic structure of an oxygen atom, singular atom, still has the same valence electron, still has the same valence qualities and characteristics as, let's say, the oxygen element. It's the smallest one possible. And beneath an atom, we like to call these things subatomic particles below, meaning sub meaning below, subatomic particles. These are things we've talked about very briefly, but now we can just summarize them. Things like neutrons. Jimmy Neutron comes to mind. No, I'm just kidding. Um, also protons and electrons. These are subatomic particles. Neutrons are electrically neutral. These are neutral. That's where the name comes from. Protons, protons positive. So we think of these as positive subatomic particles and elements, uh, positive subatomic particles that are positive and electrons, excuse me, these are E minus, right? So these are obviously going to be negative, negatively charged particles, negatively charged. And so one thing I want to note about these neutrons and protons is the fact that these actually make up the atomic nucleus. And what I mean by that is if we draw a very sort of rough rudimentary element with an atom, let's say this is our atom, this is an electron, draw two electrons here, this center structure is our neutron and proton nucleus right here. The center structure represents the nucleus right here because it's the collection of neutrons and protons. And then also one more thing we want to look at is this idea of when you look at a periodic table, let's say you look at oxygen on the periodic table, you're going to see O, you're going to see that chemical element, you're going to see its name right underneath, oxygen, and you'll often see a number here and a number here. These two numbers represent two different things. The 8 on the top, the top number on a periodic element will represent the atomic number. And the atomic number 
is just another way of representing how many protons there are. And then this bottom number right here actually represents atomic mass, or the mass number, let's say. Mass number. And this mass number is just the combination of protons and neutrons. So protons and neutrons. So if we have eight protons, that means we're obviously going to have eight neutrons because eight plus eight gives us 16. So this is our mass number. Mass number, atomic number, two different things, but both go hand in hand when we're looking at a chemical element on the periodic table. And the very absolute last thing for this lecture is isotopes. Isotopes are just weird elements, I like to think of them. They're different forms of elements. They're different because of one thing. They have different number of neutrons than the normal guy. So if we have oxygen, and how many neutrons does oxygen have again? Well, let's see. It has eight protons, 16 mass number. I know that eight plus something will give me 16. So eight plus eight neutrons gives me 16. If I want to think of an oxygen isotope, all I have to do is think of something that has not eight neutrons. It has a different number of neutrons that gives us our chemical isotope. So these are basic chemistry concepts you definitely want to be familiar with and understand an element, the difference between an element and a compound and atoms and subatomic particles, all in relation to the chemistry of biology that we're going to be looking at in much more detail as we move forward in the course. So that does it for our scientific process and chemistry lecture series.